Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. Hope everyone is well on this sunny afternoon. Well, it is where we are. Uh, Marius Saban. Uh, Saban, is that how we Serban. do print? Serban. Serban, we, um, he's joined us on the show today. Uh, it reached out to me a little while ago uh, through Kian Gulzari, wasn't it? And he says, yep. Um, yep. Kian said, I know this very, very good photographer. Um, and we've had a a bit of back and forth from working out what kind of content can we do because there's uh as we've done quite a lot of episodes we've done optimizing images and everything else but it thought it'd be good to go through a, a, a technical spec even if it's beyond the seller that is listening to do it themselves it's just giving them more of a concept what makes that top tier photographer and what makes images really pop outside of using lightbox and photoshop and post processing so obviously to, do you want to give the audience a little bit of background on yourself and then what we'll do is we'll pull up the slide so for anyone who's listening back on the podcast you can go and check out it on youtube as well if you want to see some of the imagery but of course we'll discuss and try to explain it so you can hear it from an auditory point of view so over to you uh do you want to quickly give a background on what you're doing and your background sure um my name is Maris. First of all, thank you for having me on the podcast. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, I've been doing, uh, I started with design, uh, graphic design 22 years ago, transitioned into photography, transitioned into web design about 12 years ago. But I've been doing all of them uh, because they all match, you know, uh, interconnected. So um, about four years ago, five years ago, I started, um, uh, I entered the Amazon world. As a seller, initially, uh, I went to China to the Canton Fair. That's where actually I um, I met Kian. Mm -hmm. And then um, someone asked me if I can do some uh, photography. So I did uh, some pictures for someone, for, uh, for a mentor, and he actually started referring me. I was like, okay, there, there is a possibility of this niche because what I'm doing and what I'm specializing in is uh, lifestyle product photography. So mm -hmm. I like to rent locations, million dollar locations, hire models and have, you know, uh, original images. So I don't like yeah. Photoshopping a product uh, a stock for, into a stock photo. You know, I like from picture one to picture nine to be seamless, same model, mm -hmm. same location, almost like a story. We are telling a story. And uh, because what I'm telling my clients is, People connect with people, not with products. Yeah. So if you see someone uh, using a product, you can envision yourself using it way easier than if you would see the product on a white background. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I've been doing this full time right now for Amazon only for about three years. Um, yep. Excellent. So should we get the slides up uh, sure. and then we can start to walk through these or you can walk through it for the audience? Perfect. Yeah, so I, I wanted to um, talk about uh, a few elements, uh, mainly is the lighting that is going to, I think lighting is probably 90% um, most important element into a photography because you can have uh, a $50,000 uh, $50, camera with bad lighting and then you will, you can have an iPhone with good lighting and probably the iPhone will take better pictures if you have the good lighting. So uh, what I'm shooting uh, with usually is three lights when I'm going on a location. Uh, and I want to see, I want to show you the difference in between uh, uh, this, you know, different light scenario. So this is with three lights. Uh, you will see a difference with two lights. This is it with one light. And if I turn all the lights off, <laughs> it's pretty much... So I'm not using any uh, natural light because I want to have control over my lighting. And this is a behind the scenes uh, picture where you can see all the umbrellas. I'm using huge umbrellas. The, the bigger the source of light, the, the um, softer the light on the model and on the product. Um, so if I'm going on a different slide, so I want to show you light and no modifiers, so no umbrellas. Look at the shadows here. Yeah. This is very distracting. So obviously this is not very usable in my opinion. And this is a behind the scene picture on how I did it. Basically I pointed the three lights at the model with no umbrellas. Uh, next one, 
you know, people will say, okay, but I have a flash, right? <laughs> so I put my flash on top of my camera and this is what I got with, uh, with that. Obviously not a good picture, no. uh, not very good lighting. Uh, there is another way to control the lighting is by raising the ISO. The higher the ISO, the grainier and the, the, the picture is going to get. So, yeah. for example, look at this one. Um, this is done. I, I try to kind of get the same lighting, uh, approximately the same lighting, but uh, only from natural light use, raising my ISO. So I am at 6400 ISO right here. And if you can see in the image, it's very noisy. And yeah. as a comparison from the same angle, ISO 250 with the three lights, you will see how different the image is. Yeah. So, so for me, I, uh, again, this is another point to prove that lighting is probably the most important element into a picture. And, and would you point. say um, specifically, is it the more power you generate from lighting? You know, like you've got the big umbrellas. Mm -hmm. right? okay. mm -hmm. So you had three of those set up, like huge mm -hmm. in comparison to the distribution, the size of the room. Would that make more, um, is, is that more important than the pricing of the lighting? Does that make sense? I know you've got di yes. different bulbs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So right now I'm actually um, using a Flashpoint uh, system mm. uh, from, uh, it's basically Godox uh, branded by Adorama mm. as Flashpoint. And the ones that I'm using are, uh, each light is 600 watts, right? Mm. So basically I'm shooting with 18, 100 watt at yeah. one time at one point and when you have that that allows you first of all to uh, we will talk about aperture in a, in a second yeah. uh, but basically the aperture controls the depth of field how how uh, blurry is going to be behind your subject or yeah. not and and the more uh, let me show you actually because th this will be perfect transition so for example here with f22 that means the product here, which was the tray that I photographed yesterday, mm. is in focus as well as my model is in focus. And they're pretty separate from each other. But if I want to go with an F2.8, right, my yeah. uh, my tray is in focus. Actually, not all the, like the beginning of the tray is not in focus, only where the glass is, is in focus mm. and the model is out of focus. Yeah. So basically, if you don't have light, you need to go with this number, in this case, 2.8, you know, as low as possible. So I went from 22, where I had focus in front of, and the back, and then I went all the way to 2.8, because the lower the number, the less light you need, right? Mm -hmm. So you would need an, a huge amount of lighting for the F22 to have everything in focus. Right. And sometimes you may want to have everything in focus. In that case, you would do need a lot of light. To answer your question, you do need a lot of power if you want to achieve something like uh, like this F22. Yeah, so effectively, the more lighting, the better, effectively. Yeah, exactly. like overall, um, obviously, there's the nuances of quality, but having more lighting fills more pockets with inside of that room. Exactly. Obviously, it gets hot in there as well, so the models... Uh, not, are... not too hot, not too hot. No? <laughs> what, depend, what, with that 600 watts of light? But it's flash. It's not continuous. Oh, right. Okay. It's, it's okay. a flash, right? So yeah, yeah. it's, it's going to be, you know, just a burst of light uh, yeah. every few seconds. So yeah. it's not continuous lighting. And that's okay. another thing. Uh, I tried at one point to use continuous lighting. The yeah. the beauty uh, with uh, using uh, continuous lighting is that you see exactly what you're going to get. You, you look mm. on the camera and see exactly what you're going to get. With flash, you have to change, you know, the power settings and all that. But I, I am, I'm personally fond of uh, a flash because it's more powerful than continuous lighting. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'll go. And then, for example, if we go, the next one is lenses. So um, if you <laughs> look at this one, so mm -hmm. I'm using 24 millimeters on the left. I, I wanted to get the same shape, the same size of the head, right? Mm -hmm. But with the 24, I had to uh, get super close to my model and obviously super deformed. With 200 millimeters, it's too wide. If you can see the, the head yeah, is Yeah, I was going to say, without being uh, rude to the model, it's like uh, her face has got wider in that shot compared to exactly. either side, isn't it? Yeah. 
exactly and if you go to 70 that's like the the most natural out of all of them yeah um in general i'm shooting like 90 95 percent of my pictures i'm shooting with the lens which is 24 to 70. Mm -hmm. so um there are some cases when i do need 24 millimeters uh if i have a tight space but the, the idea is not to have the model in the corner of the picture because the corner of the picture is always distorted. Hmm. And um, I believe 15 years ago, I was doing um, some classes on uh, photography and uh, my professor told me uh, an example of a big group at a wedding. And uh, the guy used, I believe, 14 millimeters or something like that, super wide. So yeah. obviously the picture of the big group at the end of the picture was super distorted. And like the best man was, <laughs> was at the end, he got, he was super distorted and the, the photographer got beat up. <laughs> so, I mean, um, 24 millimeters is good, but you have to know when to use it. Right. Yeah. And how to position your subject in, in, uh, in, in the picture. So it won't be deformed. Um, and also when it comes to lenses, um, Sometimes I'm using, let me get to the slide. Sometimes I'm using a macro lens, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm using my 24 to 70 and I want to emphasize in a product photography, like I'm doing a texture of a product. See, this is the full, uh, this is the closest I can get on the left with the 70 millimeter is the closest I could get to the product. Yeah. On the right side, look how nice I can see the texture with a macro lens, a hundred yeah. millimeter macro lens. So again, it all depends on what you need, right? You need, uh, in general, what I need is 24 to 70 and I'm, I'm shooting probably most of the pictures at about 50, 60 uh, millimeters because 50 millimeters is what our human eye can see. Yeah. And that replicates very well. And then uh, I wanted to show another sample of how nice and even look yeah when considering all light. the whites that's the way the most difficult to shoot right especially exactly with product, white on white product photo. white and transparent yeah, yeah like i just good. got a product right now for some zipper bags um uh, a guy with about 500 uh bags different type of sizes and and i have to do a lot of uh products um you know a lot of pictures of this transparent which are the most probably the most trickiest ones but if you can see at this picture, you will see how even the, the lighting is when you have three lights. Yeah. And also you're allowed to have some of the shadows in there, which you need in order to separate of course. from the bed into the trousers to the lady's top that she's wearing. And the point of the lighting is not to make, uh, to make the picture look fake. Mm. To basically, you have to keep the same shadows like you would get in real life, only... Yeah. Uh, you need more power. That's why we are using the lights, right? But uh, mm -hmm. if if the light is, um, you, you can see when some pictures, the lighting looks fake mm -hmm. in, in some pictures, right? Because it's too much lighting and from an angle that it sh shouldn't be there. Yeah. And I have one more uh, slide for you. So, or actually two slides. So a bonus tip, use tr tripods. So this is a picture I took like last week for a waterproof blanket. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, um, the the windows, right? Yeah. Uh, even though it was uh, daylight outside, mm -hmm. obviously my lights overpowered the light outside and you could see my, umbre my umbrella and everything and it's not very appealing. But if you take the picture with a tripod, then in Photoshop, you can change that. Mm -hmm. And look how nicer this one looks. Obviously, yeah. it changes the mood completely from yeah. this Go one. Back up one again. Yeah. And down to this one. Yeah. Yeah. Totally different. Mm. So um, I would say uh, overall, the lighting is the most important thing that you have to control and uh, to have control of in, in order to get great pictures. Obviously, the aperture, the lenses, uh, ISO all matter. But yeah. if you don't have the good lighting, it's kind of for nothing. Yeah. Indeed. And so what's the, um, what are some of the most common things that you see in the mistakes that you look at product images? Like if you were to do not a teardown, but a critique, you'll go through a lot of Amazon sellers listings and there's mm -hmm. this common thing other than poor lighting, cheap photography in some cases, but not all. Mm -hmm. What is the, the standouts that you see where people go wrong? And they may not even notice this in their images 
because they're not a photographer. But yep. to them, they've got no context to say, oh, yeah, this looks good. Yep. So I, I would say not having a person in the picture, like just the product itself. Yep. Like I got an order yesterday from a client and he showed me his current pictures is basically the product on white background from different angles, almost like a 360, but each picture is a different angle. And that doesn't really help, right? Because first of all, you don't see the how big the product is in comparison to if someone would hold it, right? You will see yeah. uh, uh, the size. Like I bought um, some uh, vitamins from uh, from Amazon, and for some reason, I thought the, the bottle is gonna be like this. Was like this. <laughs> yeah. There is not. Uh, but the most important thing, having a a person uh, in the picture, is you connect visually with the person. So. Um, you see the emotion because emotion yeah. sells and we justify with logic, right? Mm. So if you don't have any emotion, no connectivity, you know, from a, uh, an emotional point of view, it's yeah. kind of uh, dry, you know, yeah. if you just see the product by itself. So probably um, this would be the biggest problem of, you know, products with no mm. people in it. Do you know the other thing, just changing the subject slightly here, is mm -hmm. a perfect example of understanding proper lighting of clearly which i don't if you look at your video look at mine look how um washed out my video looks compared because even though i've got lighting in this room mm -hmm. i've obviously not set it up right and i may not have the same cameras as you. i use a logitech but there's mm -hmm. a perfect example when you put two things side by side how your your video pops and mine is very very dull but yep. then i may have other guests on who have not got a setup like mine and theirs look duller than mine. Does it make sense? Do you want yeah. to have a quick run through of what your, if someone's watching now, what lighting you've got set up in your, your studio yeah. for this interview? Yeah. So I'm actually using a, a teleprompter and I'm looking uh, on our conversation on the teleprompter. So I'm seeing myself there because yeah. I want to look straight at the camera, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm using a Canon R5 uh, for filming this and then I'm using a boom mic. For yeah. the sound and then i'm yeah. using a key light right here and two lights in the back yeah so, so i can see the, the desktop lamp lights. is that just for for show or does that actually play a part in the lighting the desktop lamp behind you uh yes that that's just uh you know uh, uh light for um you know to create a nice environment the environment the spotlight for the mm -hmm. background. Yeah. exactly cool. exactly but here's the thing um yeah. with with uh pictures mm -hmm. um People that know the power of pictures will, um, like I have a client who just hired me for some pictures. His yeah. product, 175,000 reviews. Right now he got over 176,000 reviews mm -hmm. and he still wanted better pictures. <laughs> yeah. So he's doing a ton of sales, but he knows the power of good pictures. And uh, I followed up with my client to see how the pictures you know, did. Um, and he said it took like four or five days to, uh, to see, uh, to start seeing the results. And he got, he told me, mm -hmm. I can't verify that, but he told me, uh, about 30% increase in sales. Wow. So if this coming from a listing with 175,000 reviews that are, are selling tons of products every day, like thousands yeah. every day. So pictures are important. Yeah. There's um, a message here on our LinkedIn channel here. It says, what is the best SOP for you to follow Amazon listing in terms of seven pictures? Also, please share your experience of A-plus content. Gotcha. So um, A-plus content, I actually, uh, I don't do the design of the a Just losing your audio there. I think what he's about to say doesn't do the design and focuses on the images. Um, but if you want to do a just answering the, the, the listeners question here, if you want to look at uh, optimizing and running order of images, listen to some shows on seller sessions with I think it was Anthony Lee. I've done a show with him where we talk about the structure of the seven images, the first image, the second, the third, fourth, fifth and sixth and seventh what they are, why they should be placed there, and some of the some data or at least some uh, guidance and data that backs it up. But I think we've lost Marius, and he hopefully he will come back any time now. Um, but, yeah, just to, to wrap on the show, this is 
effectively we're focused here on on lighting and some of the the technical sides of uh image uh photography and stuff uh it's way out of my wheelhouse as i explained to marius here is that um i'm looking at the screen and i'm looking at his studio set up and you can see instantly obviously he's got better cameras as well but instantly the lighting in his place looks so much uh cleaner and i think it's hard for sellers to know the difference between a great photographer like him versus other photographers that are good but it's it's not always easy to get that com uh, comparability if that's a, a proper word to use um i'm going to sign off here because obviously he's not come back on i think it's just an audio connection uh, I'll put his details into the show notes if you need to reach him. I'll be back here again tomorrow and shall be here Thursday. Take care of yourself and your family. Much love and I'll see you again soon.